I'm with Anthony Scaramucci this morning. Anthony, what did you think about that messaging? Obviously, Mnuchin has caught a lot of flack yeah. for his comments on the dollar. Well, I mean, uh, in, in Stephen's defense, I, I think he did a good job on your show explaining what he meant. But more broadly, I think what you're, what you're hearing from them is that for about 25 years, the watch on trade, meaning the, the guardsmen on our economy, were very lax. Uh, they let companies dump steel. They let countries do things like that. They let countries manipulate their currency. Uh, they let countries take advantage of the quota system as it related to trade flowing into the United States. And we really didn't do a lot to regulate that and clamp down on it. Uh, it did have, in, in their opinion, in my opinion as well, and certainly President Trump's opinion, a deleterious effect on the middle class and the lower middle class as it related to disposable income. So three things that they're doing. Number one, they're reforming the tax code to make it better for corporations uh, to empower and put disposable income in the hands of lower class and middle class families. Number two, they're sending a notice to everybody here in Davos, Switzerland, that we're okay with free trade and we're okay with symmetrical trade, but we're no longer okay with asymmetrical trade where goods and services flow into the United States freely and our stuff is embargoed in other places. Right. Or in the case of what Wilbur's uh, Secretary Ross is talking about is the, uh, the dumping of stuff. Right. Last point. I think the president's message is going to be about an America first strategy is phenomenal for the world. Because if, if China is the Saudi Arabia of manufacturing, the United States has been the Saudi Arabia of consumerism. And if we can get aggregate demand up, Maria, in the middle class and lower middle class, uh, that will unleash un unleash legendary growth for the world. And I think that's the message that the president has today. Yeah, and you have to believe that the tax plan that was signed into law actually did unleash animal spirits already. But there's a long-term impact. It, it, it'll be very interesting. About 50 years from now, a presidential historian will write that he had a Teddy Roosevelt moment uh, where Teddy Roosevelt was with the robber barons uh, in, the, in the first part of the 20th century and said, knock it off, start paying your workers more, uh, uh, flush the money through the market system, them, not through nonsense like socialism or over-governmental re regulation, but flush the money down to your workers. There's a paradox to that. You'll become more rich and you'll become more successful. Uh, it's really a Teddy Roosevelt strategy more than an Andrew Jackson strategy. I, think you, I think you make a really good point, Anthony. Let, let me ask you about the State of the Union. It's going to be next week. Uh, the president has a good story to tell in terms of le le legislation on taxes. What do you think he should focus on? We're all waiting on what the next policy is. We're assuming it's infrastructure, but then you've got the DACA situation in terms of these dreamers. Yeah, so I think that's really what it's going to be. I think he's going to restate what happened over the year. I think he's got a lot of stuff he can pin his hat on for that. I think he's got to address the DACA situation. Um, I think he'll do something unpredictable here in the next three to six months, which is uh, negotiate with the Democrats. I think he'll find common ground with them. Uh, the nonsense that they pulled on him when he had that 55-minute press conference that then Senator Durbin went out and said what he said, it's just a bunch of nonsense, Maria. At the end of the day, these guys should really get in a room together. There is common ground. Cut the deal that will also be favorable for the markets, favorable for business, and put at ease all of this uh, negative rhetoric that's being thrown at the president that is frankly unfounded. You know, it's interesting. We're just seeing this breaking news right now. Home Depot is going to be providing $1,000 cash bonuses to <laughs> hourly me too uh, workers. <laughs> that's the Me they're, Too they're, moment. They're yeah. having a FOMO situation yeah. right now, right? Yeah. Fear of, of being left out of the situation. they got to get out there uh, so they can get the positive press. Uh, and think about what the bully pulpit of the presidency does. It's through the moral suasion and the policy that he can drive an agenda that's really good for the American people and long term will be very good for the world. Let me ask you about markets. You obviously have been a, 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 a markets guy for a long time and have watched ups and downs and have traded around it very well. Mm -hmm. What yeah. turns around this market? You're talking about seven and a half trillion dollars of new value gained since the election. And markets don't go up in a straight line. Do you expect markets continue into record well, territory in 18? Certainly anybody that's been at it, this is my 30th year observing markets, uh, knows that it can't go up in a straight line, knows that there will be more volatility entering the space, which is why I always caution uh, people at home to have a rational tactical asset allocation plan, some in the market, but obviously some in bonds and cash. But as, as what's going on right now in the market is because it's forecasting future earnings growth right. and it's forecasting uh, better 
better profits for these companies. Remember, you take taxes down from, I guess they were 35. Close to 40 percent yeah, yeah, when exactly. you look at local as well. Exactly. Down so just, to 21. That's a so huge deal. A little bit of, of tightening and better technology in your company, uh, you're probably going to drop 40 to 50 percent more profitability down to the bottom line. And so the market going up seven and a half trillion dollars is in line with uh, what they're predicting to have happened. And so, so I'm okay with the market right here. One, one measurement that I think uh, professionals use is the market's price relative to overall GDP. If it goes over 200%, uh, then that's really in a red light zone. People have to be careful. It's not there yet. I do think we're going to have a surprisingly good year this year uh, just because of what's happening in taxes in the United States. Well, I mean, they're looking at 23% earnings growth for the S&P 500 in 2018. Yeah, and, and those companies will use some of that profitability to buy back stock, which you know, uh, as you shrink the uh, denominator in, in, in that situation, will be even more more powerful on the EPS. All right, we'll leave it there. Anthony, always okay, a pleasure. Great, great to be here. Really it's good really to see you. It's really not that cold either. I'm, I should have took the jacket off no, and made me look it's ma not, more macho. It's not <laughs> Larry Fink was a lot more macho than me today. I'm very upset about <laughs> you it. You are macho. Oh, thank you. We know you, you are. Anthony oh, I heard Scaramucci. that from a Brooklyn girl, so now I feel really good. <laughs>